In this video on C Sharp Basics, let's talk about collections. So the most popular types of collections are array, list, and collection. Now there are many other types of collections out there, but these are the most popular. These are collections that inherit from the I enumerable interface, and that permits iteration over the items, making them the most common collection types. Now the enumerable collections, which all implement the I enumerable interface, are most commonly implemented because of their ease of use with the for each loop. Let's look at defining an I enumerable collection. It's pretty simple. We just have to define the object using either the I enumerable interface or any type that implements the I enumerable interface. So that could be a list, a collection, or an array, along with a type parameter. Then we're defining the name of the variable called my items, and then we're assigning this one of the different types of collections. In this case, it's a new list of the same data type that we used in the I enumerable type specification. In order to use an I enumerable collection, we just simply implement a for each loop. And now we specify the same data type here so that each item will be of that type that's in the I enumerable collection. Then of course, Upon each item, we're going to perform some sort of code. Let's take a look at an example of a collection that utilizes the I enumerable interface along with the for each loop. So let's go ahead and define a collection. I'm going to make this collection a type of list. And that list is going to require some sort of type parameter. We can see here list of T. So that type parameter, I'm going to go ahead and say is a type of int. And I'm going to make this collection numbers. That's going to be the name of my collection. Now we're going to assign numbers a new instance of the list class and we're passing along once again int as the type parameter and let's go ahead and leave it like that. So now that I've created my numbers variable we need to go ahead and fill this list with some items. To do that I'm just going to use the for loop and for i equals zero i is less than, let's say, 100, and then increase i each iteration. And now what we're going to do is just in our numbers list, I'm going to add, using the add method, I'm going to add the value of i. So now we have a numbers collection that is going to be the values 0 through 99 as the collection. Now, after we've filled in our numbers list, I'm going to go ahead and go down here and let's do a for each loop. Now, we know that each item is going to be a type of int and the collection is the numbers collection. Now, what I'd like to do is add up each one of these numbers in our numbers list. So in order to do that, I'm going to keep a running total in a new variable. We're just going to go ahead and say is int x and let's assign it an initial value of zero and then for each item in numbers we're going to add to the value of x whatever the value of item is and i did a little shortcut trick here and i haven't shown you this but the plus equal sign means to go ahead and add item to the value that is already inside of x essentially this is shorthand for x equals x plus item, okay? It's just a shorter way of doing that. So let's do x plus equals item. And now after our for each, for each loop is completed, let's do a console dot write line. And we'll just output the value of x to see what the total of all of the numbers one through 99 is when they're added together. And do console dot read line, oops read line and now let's go ahead and try to run it so by using a list of numbers we are able to use the for each loop to enumerate over each item within the numbers collection or the numbers list the total value of each number added together came to 4950 now to show you that this list comes from an interface of i enumerable I'm going to go ahead and right click on list and let's go to the definition of list. 
By doing so, we can see public class list of t, and here we have all of our inherited classes. So these are all interfaces, and if we look here, we see i enumerable of t and i enumerable. If we look at i enumerable of t by once again right clicking on it and saying go to definition, we can see that i enumerable simply implements this one method called get enumerator. So any class that's going to have an implementation of i enumerator t must have the get enumerator method. Now that definition of what the get enumerator get enumerator method is, isn't specified in the interface. Instead, it's up to the individual classes to define how that get enumerator method works. And if we scroll down here, we can see public enumerator get enumerator is in fact a method that is part of the list class.